Hello and welcome to a demonstration video of the Siemens Logic Matrix by Piguer Automation. The Logic Matrix is included with PCS7 version 8.2. The Logic Matrix is designed to emulate a standard cause and effect, like the one that you see on your screen. The cause and effect is broken up into three parts. The first part is the list of causes here in the rows on the left side of the cause and effect. The second part is a list of effects in the rows along the top of the cause and effect. The last part is the transitions, where the rows and the columns intersect. For this demonstration, we are assuming that the base project is already completed. The plant hierarchy is already implemented, and the charts containing the analog and digital signals are already in the program. We are also assuming that the program can be loaded into a PLC or a PLC sim and that you can bring a runtime up. The first step is to right click on the program in the component view, select insert new object, and select logic matrices folder. The next step is to right click in the logic matrices folder and select Insert New Object, select Logic Matrix. Let's go ahead and rename the Logic Matrix at this point. And then right click and open the Logic Matrix. The dialog that opens up, we'll read the project data. So go ahead and click read project data. This reads all the tags in the program so that the logic matrix editor can use them. As you can see, the logic matrix is set up just like a cause and effect. Causes on the left, effects on the top, and transitions where they meet. So the first thing we should do is set up the logic matrix. So click edit, and then select matrix properties. So let's go ahead and put something in for the title. Then the description. The description will show up in the open area in the top right hand corner of the logic matrix. While we're at it, let's go ahead and enter the block comment. Now we need to assign a DB for the logic matrix, DB1 in this case, and a block icon type, 1 in this case. The next tab is version tracking, which you can turn on if this is important to your project. In the alarms tab, we can set up the global alarm scheme for this matrix. Each cause and effect can also have individual alarm schemes set up for it. The next tab is the OS authorization tab. And then the last tab is the View tab. This is where we set up how you want your matrix to look in the matrix editor. Once we click OK, we can see that the description showed up in the upper left-hand corner of the matrix. And now we're ready to go ahead and enter some causes and effects. So for this demonstration, we are going to implement two basic functions. One function will start the auxiliary loop pump when the compressor is running if there is low loop oil pressure. The other function is a permissive for the compressor if there is no loop oil pressure and low cooling water pressure. So the first thing we need to do is put in the tag for the compressor running. So right click on the first row and select direct connection. Find the motor chart in the first pane, the motor in the second pane, and the feedback out in the third pane, and click Save Link. Because this is an AND function, let's go ahead and add a second cause. Right click on the first cause, and select Add Cause Input. Then right click on the new input space, and select Direct Connection again. Find the pressure transmitter, in this case we will select the warning low digital output. 
Because this is an AND function, we right-click in the cause function and select AND. We also see that both of these causes are energized to trip, which means they both trip on a 1 bit. So now let's add the effect. Right-click on the first effect column and select direct connection. Find the aux loop pump motor chart, the motor block, and the force on input. For this particular effect, we want the output to be latched such that the motor cannot be turned off unless there's an operator interaction. So right-click on the transition and select S for stored. The next function we can implement is a permissive for the low loop oil pressure and water pressure. So we'll add the links in the same fashion as before. Because these are warning low bits, we also want to confirm that these are energized to trip bits. Let's add the effect. Use the direct connection functionality to add the tag for the permit input for the motor block. Once that is in, let's fill in the transitions. In this case, we choose N for not stored. This means that the effect will clear as soon as the cause is clear. Let's also verify at this point that the for start functionality is an energized to trip and the permit functionality is a de-energized to trip. So at this point, we can go ahead and generate the logic matrix. What this is doing is generating all the logic in the charts for the logic matrix. After this, we need to compile and download the AS and compile the OS. Once the OS is compiled, let's go ahead and open the picture in the graphics designer. We can see that the logic matrix block icon is on the screen. We can place it on the screen where we need it and then close the editor. At this point, we can go ahead and bring up the runtime. Once the runtime is up, if we click on the logic matrix block icon, we can see the faceplate has an effect for the permissive not met. If we close the logic matrix faceplate and open up the motor, we can see that the permissive is not met. If we open up the permissive from the faceplate, we see that the logic matrix faceplate only shows the conditions for that particular interlock. If we close that window and open up the logic matrix again, we can go ahead and start simulating good pressures. So let's start the cooling water motor and simulate a good pressure in the pressure transmitter. We can see, once we do this, that the low pressure cause immediately clears.
The next thing we want to simulate is good lube oil pressure. So we can start the lube oil pump, and then we can simulate good pressure. You can see once the pressure is good, that that cause immediately clears. The effect also clears and satisfies the interlock in the compressor motor. Now we can go ahead and start the compressor. Once it's running, we can see that we are already have a cause and alarm in the cause and effect faceplate. So the next step is to go ahead and stop the lube oil pump. To verify that this cause and effect works properly, we need to simulate low lube oil pressure. We'll see, once the lube oil pressure is an alarm, that the lube oil pump is forced on. At this point, we can go ahead and simulate good lube oil pressure. Once the pressure is good, we'll see that the cause is cleared, but the effect is latched. To clear the effect, we have to reset the effect in the logic matrix faceplate. Once it's clear, we can go ahead and stop the lube oil pump. And now we can see we are back to a normal operating state for this system. This concludes our demonstration of the Siemens logic matrix. Please feel free to contact us at any time for further information.